Uh, welcome back to the channel and the second part of the review between the Mega MIT 420 and the Sonal MIC 30 and the Fluke 1587 FC insulation testers. Uh, sorry about going into the uh, second part of the video, I just felt it was getting a little bit too long with everything else that I wanted to get through uh, in comparing these instruments, so we'll crack on with it. And moving on to the accuracy measurements. Um, overall accuracy, the winner goes to the Mega here at 1.139%. Uh, the MIC30 comes in second at 1.289%. Uh, the Fluke comes in last as 2.789%. Uh, the real major bloopers there for really Fluke and measuring phase resistance on my winding simulator uh, that comes out as 11%. So a bit of poor accuracy there. It also suffers for um, the insulation output, um, open circuit voltage and sh short circuit current has much more variability in it than these two instruments. Second worst instrument after that was actually on the Sonal, and that was actually in the capacitance test function. Um, the capacitance bank that I used for that is rated at uh, 63 volts, so I had to test it at 50 volts, so that might uh, be part and parcel for the slightly higher tolerances seen on that instrument which is around about 5% uh, just over 5% for the capacitance accuracy tests on the Okay I'd just like to clarify a couple of things with regard to testing the output of transducers and using the Sonal instrument here um, because in the table this MIC30 actually comes out as spot on uh, same result as the Fluke 1587 uh, which are both slightly better than the MIT 420. However, there's a couple of caveats to that that I'm just going to show you. The first one is, uh, obviously this instrument doesn't have a current function on there, therefore I have to measure the output of the transducer via load resistor. Generally speaking, to get the most accurate result, I would put the load resistor, which is in this little adapter here, direct onto the instrument, and then I would be removing all of the uh, resistance of these connections and the wire from the result. However, this is a standard 19mm spacing for instruments and you can see it will go straight into the, if we bring the fluke to the front, uh, you can see that it, it lines up with the two input jacks there and will go in dead easy. Um, also the same on the Mega here as well. Uh, input at the top, but uh, if we line them up, hopefully you see it lines up and it will go in dead easy. When I try and do this with the Sonal, you can see here the output jacks are one to these two outer ones, the centre one is the guard terminal. Um, when I try and line him up, you see that hopefully, and you can't see because somebody's got the thumb in the way, that this is actually off. This is around about 20 mil spacing between these two so it's not a standard 19 mil or three quarter inch spacing between these two jacks. Now you can force this in however that's putting pressure on either the banana plugs on the adapter or more importantly probably the jacks inside the instrument uh, which uh, could lead to damage so it's not a major issue you can overcome it it's just something to be aware of that the pitch on the input of the sonal instrument is not compatible with standard 19mm spaced adapters. So the second element of concern is with regard to the resolution of the instrument. So what I've done here is set up the Fluke to operate in the same manner as the MIC30 here and use the voltage function across the load resistor to measure milliamps. I'm kicking out 8 milliamps on the instrument. I've got 8.00 on the Fluke and I've got 0.8 volts on the MIC30 as well. However, I'm missing two decimal points on the resolution in comparison to the Fluke there. Unfortunately, it's the way I carry this test out. I pick the 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20 test points in there. So when you have one resolution, it comes out as quite accurate. If I change the output of this to, say, 19.5 milliamps, you see that I get 1.95 volts on Fluke that matches the 19.5 milliamps. You can see that there, hopefully. Turn around a bit more, there you go, 1.95 volts. Um, 
it's pulling up to so oscillating on the uh, yeah so pull up to 19.6 now a transducer kicking out 19.6 I'd want to adjust the span on that to get that up to 20 that's kind of our tolerance for transducer output there really you can see I'm measuring 1.96 um, and I've even got a uh, third decimal place after that when using the fluke in voltage function. However, when using this uh, MIC30, you see it's gone up to 2.0 volts. Um, it's rounded the figure up as you would expect the instrument to do. If you're testing the transducer with that, you'd think the transducer was okay, whereas the fluke is actually turning around saying it's not, and you need to calibrate the transducer. So that's a bit of a practical issue when using the MIC for this kind of testing. Um, also, just quickly flip him over and demonstrate the Mega. I guess you see here exactly the same setup, just move the jacks over. You can see I've got the decimal place on this. I've got 1.96 volts on this. Um, not quite as good as the Fluke is dropping a decimal point, but at least you know there is something wrong with the transducer with using either the Mega and definitely using the Fluke there, but not so much. Uh, when using this little fellow here, so just something to be aware of when you're testing your transducers. Okay, physical construction of the instruments. Let's turn them off. Let's turn them off. Uh, standard mega box here, um, quite slightly ergonomically shaped to get your hands around. Um, it's a solid plastic case with a glued on rubber molding. Um, input connections here, both at the top, just the two. So the red one has the remote probe facility there. Flipping them over, separate compartments for the battery pack, which is six uh, AA batteries and protection fuse in here. Um, single Phillips screw to remove both of those that is captivated. And you have a loop carrier there for putting a loop through to hang the instrument from. The tilt bail here comes away with the battery pack, gives you nice easy access and stands upon the bench like so. Um, let's look at the sonnel. Um, you might be able to see, you can't because I've strategically placed another instrument behind it because looking at this, um, the immediate thing you see is it has no tilt bail. Um, but we'll get to that. The, the meter is a similar sort of construction to the Mega. You've got this uh, molded rubber glued onto the hard plastic case. It's, it's quite pronounced. It does provide an awful lot of protection for the instrument. If you look on the side there, you can't see anything sticking out. Um, whereas you look at the, the Mega, you quite clearly see that the function switch here sticks out proud. So do these buttons to some extent. Um, so if you dropped it on its face, as this instrument appears to have better protection. Um, input terminals are again on the top as they are with the Mega. And you have the three on this one you have uh, negative, positive and the guard terminal for when you're using either a shielded test lead or you're, you're doing a, a three-wire guarded test on a test object. Um, around the back you obviously have the loop for a hanging hook um, that does come with the kit. Um, the battery compartment here is down the bottom, that's four AAs on this. Uh, a little bit of a gripe, four screws to remove it from this, however those screws are quite small and none of them are captivated, so quite easy to lose. Um, captivating screws these days is quite an easy function to do, so whilst it's a nice, uh, tough, solid build, nice quality inside, um, that's a little bit of a miss for me. You really should be able to captivate screws. Um, the other thing to mention here on this is that when you do take this apart, there are actually two fuses hidden away, one on the guard, one on the line going out. Um, that you're not aware of, you're not aware of that in the manual whatsoever. So the instrument could, you could blow those and the instrument stop working and you'd be none the wiser unless you actually opened it up uh, and found the two fuses inside. Whereas with the Mega here, the, the fuse is immediately obvious, easy to get to and is user replaceable. So the tilt bail saga. Um, for me, it's quite unusual to see an instrument of this particular format, the vertical format typical of uh, multimeters and a lot of insulation testers it's unusual not to have a tilt bail on them um, and I thought it would be a bit of an issue uh, but I have to say when I'm out on site I've not really noticed the lack of the tilt bail 
you can always find this someplace to prop up against the side of the motor or a, a bit of the unistrut or some of the motor support mechanism it'll sit on top of a motor if necessary you can always find somewhere to stick it and still be able to view the screen um, now when I am testing on a bench that's when I do miss it so when I've been testing uh, the winding simulator that I've got this is when I've been propping it up against another instrument and uh, using that as a rather expensive tilt bell for it um, so yeah not the end of the world um, just slightly unusual I guess but out in the field I don't think it's an issue um, construction on the fluke over here slightly different construction in that you have a separate rubber boot that is uh, clipped in place around the instrument in order to get to the battery compartment down here uh, it's a single penny slot screw here to undo but you have to prise this rubber boot off to get into the battery pack which again is also for AA batteries on this tilt bail here obviously um, slot for the T-pack hanging strap that doesn't come with the instrument but is available as an optional extra and what you also get on this that you don't get on either of these other two instruments is the probe holder, fairly standard item included on multimeters really to either hold the probe during use or for storage, whichever you prefer. Going around the front, input jacks on the fluke here are the four. Unlike the other two instruments where you do the testing from the same jacks uh, with the additional use of the guard jack on this, you have to keep swapping jacks around on this instrument depending on the test that you're doing. So your standard voltage and resistance uh, temperature is off the two positive and the common jack there. Current is off of this one and the common jack there. And insulation testing is off of this special jack and using the positive of the current input as the negative of the insulation test. It's a feature I really do not like on this tester, uh, but it's what they've chosen. It is thankfully quite rare and I don't see it on an awful lot of testers um, because I find it quite annoying. Uh, I would much rather have the kind of setup seen on these two instruments here. Um, in terms of memory function, the Mega here has internal memory. Uh, you just save the reading to a data number. You do that by hitting the save button there. Very simple and then you can spin around to the file folder here and then you can page through the results. Uh, select them at a time and OK and you record them and then you can get the readings that were it's a current that's an homage test so there's the if you'd have pulled back a resistance reading one you'd be able to page through the ratio the current and the voltage and the resistance reading um, but you can't do that with a resistance recording um, for the sonal here you can save them to it's a two button that you flip it over to memory save. It won't do it because I haven't got a result. Um, and then you can select the data number to save it to and hit the enter to save it. So a slightly more complex procedure to save the reading than you do have on the Mega to get the residents back. You've got the special memory function down here similar to the Mega over this side. Then you can page through um, the memories and enter and call them back. Uh, there's no data in that one. Uh, and then once you've got to the memory, you can then page through the various values. Uh, there's the one minute, there's 58 nanofarads there, the current displayed over there for the reading at one minute. Uh, that's the 15 second reading. Uh, that's the 30 second reading. Uh, that's the initial reading. So a bit more data available on the save function than there is on the Mega there. On this instrument it also has Bluetooth and you can transmit the data uh, wirelessly to a small little program. All it does is allow you to transfer the actual readings that are available in memory. You don't get any extra data. However, it is one step up from the Mega that doesn't have uh, the ability to uh, export any data on USB or to Bluetooth it over to a device. Um, the Fluke, on the other hand, is completely different. This does not have any internal memory function whatsoever. Its memory is reliant upon uh, a wireless connection to 
uh, an iPad or an iPhone and you can then save data using the Flute Connect program. The major difference between that is that this will log. So it will log any of the voltage readings at, uh, I think it's about four readings per second, this will save at. Um, you can also do that for a DAR and a Pi test so you can get the polarization index resistance plot out of this instrument saved onto your iPad that you can then put into reports. You can't do that with either of these other two devices. That is a pretty good function uh, available for, on the Fluke system there. Uh, okay, so I guess it's choice time. Um, I kind of regard these two, the Sonal and the Mega, as insulation continuity testers and this as an insulation multimeter. Uh, as I've said before, the majority of my testing is around insulation testing, so I'm not so interested in an insulation multimeter. For me, it's saying more at uh, control and instrumentation techs that want to have the, the good current testing functionality, um, the wider ranges of voltage measurement and resistance measurement, and, and diode test and capacitance and the like, and just want a uh, go no go insulation test function built into their instrument. I think it's ideal for that kind of a trade there. So the Sonal and the Mega here, uh, for me, aimed more at industrial electricians. For me, I would go more for the Mega. I like the extended range for the insulation test at the 500 volt test voltage. Um, I do prefer the split capacitance function as opposed to the function built in on the insulation tester on this. Um, I also find the selection of the DAR and the, the Pi a little bit better, a bit more user-friendly on this instrument than I do on the Sonal there. Um, so for me, yeah, I would place this instrument at the top of my list. I'd go for the Sonal after that uh, and I'd leave the uh, 1587 to somebody else to be honest. It, it just doesn't have the capability to test modern day insulation systems for, for my needs. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in another video.